Hey folks, it's David Bethune from The Mimics Company with another Mickey Masterclass Navigation and Pages. Today we'll look at adding pages and content to your Mickey and organizing your navigation so your users can quickly and easily find your content. We'll also see how to use cool formatting to make your pages even more interesting and engaging. So let's get started. Okay, so today I want to take a deeper dive into navigation and pages, which are how you're going to put your content in your Mickey and how your users are going to find it. So I'm already logged in as a user with editing permission. I can tell that because there's the blue edit page icon down here in the corner. I'm going to go up to the top of the toolbar and click on administration and then click on navigation. Now, before I talk too much about this, I want to go over a couple best practices for wiki navigation because it's really different from what we do with Word documents or PDFs or even websites. In PDFs and Word documents, there's really no such thing as navigation, maybe a table of contents or some links. They would be very hard to change after the fact, certainly after you've distributed the document, kind of impossible. Um, even with the website, we don't expect the traditional menu to change very much. Maybe items would be added, but certainly not the big outer overall structure. The opposite is true with a wiki. A wiki isn't done all at the beginning, and nor is it all done at the end, and neither is the navigation. In other words, the navigation needs to be developed and updated alongside your contents. So it's okay to have super simple direct navigation to the pages that exist if they're only a handful of pages at the beginning. Once there's more or you find a topic is taking over the home page or taking over the navigation, that's when you start making sections and section pages and landing pages. And we're going to look at that more in another video. Today I want to talk about the physical parts of what you got to do to get links and navigation in there. So let's start here in the navigation area and look at what these four types of navigation on the left side mean. Obviously none disabled is pretty straightforward. If you were building your whole site, with graphics or links in the text area inside the pages, you might not need this navigation down bar down the left. I think that's a pretty unusual use case. Uh, the other one that you might want to look at briefly here is this one called Site Tree. That's going to build the navigation dynamically from the folders and pages that I already have in there, meaning that everything in there is going to be navigable and it's all going to be navigable based on where you put it. Now that might be terrific if you're super organized. When we built this Chef Mickey demo page, it's pretty organized. There's a home page, entrees and desserts, and these are the folders that I made, the virtual folders that I made. We're going to talk more about that. And these are the pages that I put inside those virtual folders. So if you like that file and folder organization, that style might work for you, but there is a better way. It is called static navigation. And it's static because you're gonna design it and you're gonna change it as the content changes. You're gonna keep improving the navigation, moving things around, changing the names and aggregating and bundling them together over time. So let's look exactly at how we're gonna do that. Okay, so I'm here in static navigation. It gives me full control, lets me do a lot of powerful things that can't be done with the automatic navigation. I'm gonna show you several of those right now. Let's look first at this general section for adding goodies to the list. So I can add links, headers, and dividers and push and pull them around. Okay, links obviously go somewhere. A header is like this entrees header. I can move this up or down and I can add another header. Let's say we want to make a new section called candy and I can leave that at the bottom of the list or move it up and down. A divider is just a bar. So it just sits there like a little bar. I can drag that up and down. You may not need these things the first day, but when you start to get masses of stuff in here, you're gonna wanna bundle it together and organize it. So these bars and dividers are a good way to do that. The other thing I wanna show you while I'm here is how to delete stuff. That's this delete button here. I'm gonna get rid of the bar. I'm gonna get rid of my candy header. And instead, I'm gonna add a link. Let's put in another link under the dessert section because you know I like some desserts. It's going to be a candy. It's going to be mom's peanut butter fudge. And I want to stop here and show you about icons because I think it's a really important part of what you can do with customizing your Mickey. Icons would be very difficult to add into a web page or PDF in a traditional sense. 
Uh, but they are very useful for visitors in identifying, especially identifying repeatedly, the pages that they want to go to when they see an icon that they recognize. Your Mickey has built in thousands of really cool icons for you to use, and I recommend these Font Awesome 6 ones. So I'm going to click on this reference and show you how to get an icon out of here into your Mickey. When you come in here, there's lots of ways you can search this. Be sure that you have turned on free and pro because you get both with Mickey. I'm going to go ahead and look for the word gift in here. These are a nice gift to take to somebody. I would certainly be happy if somebody brought me some of my mom's peanut butter fudge. All right, you can click on the individual icon and get a lot of information about it, including seeing what it looks like in different sizes. Also, these icons are going to come in several flavors, regular, light, duotone, and solid, typically, which is what we're looking at over here. See how the solid one is filled in versus the regular one where the inside is open, right? So I'm going to take the solid one for now. And what I need to know is this part that's right in here. It says F-A-S-F-A -A gift. Okay, sounds like computer code. If I'm back on this page, it just says gift at the bottom. Why do we need all those letters? We need all those letters because we have to specify what icon set we're after. And that's F-A-S or the solid font awesome icons. And then it was called F-A gift. And there it is. If I type it correctly, it shows up in there. Changing the icon to something else is just as easy as going back here and typing a different word. That one's called utensil spoon. So if I want the solid utensil spoon, it's FAS-FA.utensil spoon, and there's the spoon. If I click apply here, this would be added to my navigation. Okay, and it looks like we might be done, but we're not because that link doesn't go anywhere. So let's scroll down here to the target type area and look at how we decide where a link is going to go. Okay, before I do too much with this, I see I've made a typo. And that's very typical with wikis. You should expect to make mistakes because you can fix them easily. It's not really set in stone in a wiki. The great thing about it is if you do a good job of organizing your page names and folders and your pages and links in your navigation, people are going to be able to get to the current most correct content no matter when they come in. So let's not fidget to fix mom's peanut butter fudge up here. Then I'm going to go down to the target type section and talk about where that page is going to live. I'm going to choose page here, meaning a page in our wiki as opposed to an external link on the outside and click select page. Now, I like to talk a lot about how easy and fast it is to do stuff in a wiki. This area of naming pages and virtual folders is one thing that should give you pause. The reason for that is it's very important for you to have a good naming scheme so that you know what's on your own pages. The second thing is that when you make links to these pages, you're going to use these names to wire together the link. So here again, if you don't have a good name, it's hard to tell if you're linking to the page that you intend. The third thing is that links are rather difficult to change. It's possible to change the links. It's going to, we're going to be releasing some tools to help you do that in future releases of Mickey to automate that process. But for today, if you change the name of a page later, you will have to manually go and change and find all the links. So you want to take a second and stop before you just add a page here and put something or put something in the quote wrong folder. What are virtual folders? They're just like real folders, except you don't have to manage any folders. The Mickey is going to make up the folders just as an organizational tool for you to see where your pages live. So I've made up two folders here called desserts and entrees. Since I've decided to leave my candy recipe on the desserts menu on the outside, I'm going to put it under desserts here on the inside. When I click on that, I can see the links for the pages that already exist. And if I were just making this a link on the navigation to a page that already existed, all I would have to do is click on these and you'll see I get the virtual folder desserts and the name of the page. The virtual folder desserts and the name of the page, David's Famous Cookies. Take a moment here and notice that the names have dashes instead of a space. 
The reason for that is that this becomes part of the URL that people use to navigate and bookmark the page, and those are not allowed to have spaces in them. So don't write spaces in your folder names or your page names. You're going to write a dash instead. Now, I said that I'm going to create a new page here, and I don't really want anything in this box. So I'm going to empty this out. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the desserts folder, and I'm going to make a new page called PB Fudge and click select. Now, it's important to know that the new page doesn't actually exist yet. We've just created the navigation to it. But it turns out that creating the navigation first is one of the fastest ways to create a new page. It also does double duty because it guarantees that there's a way for the user to get to that page and that you don't forget to make that part. So that's a style that I like to use a lot. So I'm going to go up here and click apply and we'll look at getting the content into that page. Okay, there are five ways to create a new page inside your Mickey. You can use whichever of them works for you where you happen to be at the time. So I'm going to exit the admin section and show you the way that I usually use to create one. And that's by linking it from the navigation when it doesn't exist yet. So I see mom's peanut butter fudge is over here on the left. I'm going to click on that and I'm offered to create the page if it doesn't exist. By the way, if you have a link up for a non-existent page and a non-logged in user happens to click it in the same moment, they're going to have to log in to get this editing page. The general public won't be able to edit the page unless, of course, you allow that in your Mickey. I'm going to click Create Page. And I'm presented with a box asking me what kind of editor I want to use. Now, there are two kinds of main editors in here. WYSIWYG, or one that looks like more like a word processor, and the Markdown Editor. And I'm going to recommend that you use the Markdown Editor for a couple different reasons. First of all, uh, well, let me go ahead and fill this in and then we'll talk more about why I think you should choose the Markdown Editor. All of these pages have these page properties or settings in common. They need to have a name. This one's going to be Mom's Peanut Butter Fudge. The description tags are optional. This path is the name that we picked when we wrote the link. So by clicking that link, we've created a page with that name. I'm going to click OK here. And I want to look at how this Markdown editor is different from a traditional word processor. In Markdown, you write a, a, a code, essentially, a kind of a shortcut code on the left, and you get back the results on the right. And at first you might think, well, that's terrible. Why would I want to write a separate code instead of just having it be WYSIWYG? What you see is what you get. Just make it bold or make it italic or make it a paragraph or a column. Well, there's a couple reasons. One is that, yeah, that looks great on the screen, and that's why you have that preview on the right side. But the problem is those formats turn out to be difficult to edit and difficult to remove from your content when you need to repurpose it or use it again somewhere else. So a markdown is designed to separate your content from the formatting as much as possible. When you get used to working in Markdown a little bit, we're going to have another Masterclass video just about Markdown top to bottom and special formatting. But I promise, once you get used to it, you're really going to like the shortcut style. Your ability to write links, uh, to write headers, lists, beautiful formatted lists, icons, buttons, and to copy and paste them around in a way that really would not be possible with a Word document, a PDF, uh, email, something like that, even a traditional web page. Be very difficult to include this level of cool formatting in your documentation without a lot of headache using those other tools. Markdown makes it easy. It's cut and paste. Everything about Markdown is plain text and you can see what you're doing on the left side as you do it. So just to give you an example of some kind of complicated formatting that Markdown will create for you with a WYSIWYG kind of interface are these boxes that we call block quotes or info boxes or pop-up boxes. There's a lot of words for them. But basically, it puts a nice little format around some important information for the user. Important, don't forget to do this. And there it is after my header, and don't forget to do this. Even creating something as simple as that, or having a couple different styles of those boxes, like uh, one that's more of a warning, 
This would be very difficult in a word processor, pretty much impossible. And cutting and pasting these or moving these to somewhere else on the page, putting this up here or putting this header down here or changing this header to a deeper level header while promoting this one to a bigger level header, those would have taken a lot longer in Microsoft Word. So use the fact that formatting and content are separate in Markdown to do two things. One is get the content out first of all. Even if it has no formatting at all, that's okay. That's really important. Even if you can only think of the list, banana, apple, pear, and you don't realize until later that it should really be a list and you don't realize that all those items should be on the list or you don't realize that you've forgotten to capitalize apple, just do those things later when you do realize them. So a Mickey is designed to be edited and add formatting quickly and flexibly and improve it, make it more beautiful over time, not to get in the way of writing or to make it hard to copy and paste text around your pages. Okay, so we said we could make a page by clicking on it in the navigation when it doesn't exist, and that worked. There it is, and now it exists, and I can navigate to it. Let's look at the other ways to create a page from scratch. Perhaps the most basic is this new page button up here, which just starts about asking me where I want the page to go. So I'm gonna put another dessert in here that mom used to make, and that's Texas chocolate sheet cake. So I'm gonna click on desserts, and instead of new dash page, I'm gonna call it Texas dash chocolate dash sheet cake, and click select. Now, here, unlike adding it to the navigation, the page is going to exist right away, but it won't be navigable. So you kind of can pick one way to start or the other way to start. And that often depends on whether you want people to be able to see the page in your audience right away or not. If you need to keep this private while you're working on it, you can do that by creating it without the navigation. I'll show you how to put them together later and how to find this page even if it isn't on the navigation. And let's do something else here too. Let's make this page be a copy of a page I already have, which is a long way of saying from a template. So instead of picking an editor up here, I can click from template. When I do this, the page is gonna use whatever editor the original page used. So if the original page was marked down, this one will be marked down too. And I'm gonna take my fancy cookie recipe over here and make that the basis of Texas chocolate sheet cake. Now, you can see behind this box that I've co it's copied the entire recipe, including the name. But this isn't David's Famous Chocolate Chip Cookies. This is Texas Chocolate Sheet Cake, and I'm gonna take off the description right now. I see there's the name that I picked in the previous dialog box, and say okay. All right, it hasn't changed any of the content. Still says David's Famous Cookies, but if I'm using this as a template, I'm gonna evolve this into something the public will see later. This is fine, and keeping it private is also fine. So I'm gonna click Create here to save that page, but not have it anywhere on my nav. You can see it is not here. How am I gonna to get to it if it's not on the nav? When I go into Administration, I can click Pages on the left, and all the pages that exist are here, including the hidden Texas chocolate sheet cake. By the way, it's not really hidden. If someone else from the outside has a link, if you sent them a link in email, or they visited the page previously and they bookmark it, they'll still be able to visit these pages that are not on the nav. That can be a good thing. If you have some old doc that you wanna deprecate, you can change the old link to say, hey, new doc is over here, link them to your new doc without breaking that link for someone else. But if I wanna edit this page and get it fixed up to the full version of Texas Chocolate Sheet Cake, I can do that with the edit here. And then I can always put it on my navigation. So let's say I did wanna do that. How would I do that? Here was a quick refresher course. We're gonna to go to administration, navigation. We're gonna click add. It's going to be a link. The name is Texas Choc Chocolate Sheet Cake. I'm gonna pick an icon from Font Awesome. The icon that I want is cake. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, it's not really a birthday cake, but that'll have to do in this case. I'm gonna click the duotone birthday cake because that's kind of neat looking. So I'm gonna have F-A-D, F-A, birthday cake, and there it is, and click add. Actually, I don't like the duotone too much. Let's make the solid, okay. And click uh, down here into target type, 
and choose page. We're gonna point it to a page that already exists. It's my Texas chocolate sheet cake. Select and apply. Okay, so now I've added a page first with the add button and then with the navigation over there. The third way to add it is to make a duplicate right here when you're looking at it. What if I had this section page called cookies and I was evolving another section page called candies that kind of has this style with a photo and a list. By the way, this is an important point. Mickey and Wikis in general use a lot of cut and paste. So instead of starting from blank, think about where's some part of a page that you already have or that you've seen, even if it's in one of our pages, you can copy and paste the markdown right into your own Mickey and then revise the contents while keeping the formatting. That's another cool concept that would be very difficult to do in something like a Word document or a PDF. So if I wanted to evolve this cookies page into a future candy page, I could go down here and say duplicate, and then I get to pick where it goes. I'm going to call it desserts candy and click select. And this is just going to be my overall candy master page once I get some stuff in it, which is also not public and not on any navigation right now. But we could find it in pages just like the other one. The uh, the last place that you can create a, a link to something uh, or and a, a new page at the same time is by writing the link directly in the markdown. So let's say that on this cookies page, I wanted to reference my new candy page um, and it doesn't exist. I can write a link right in here by going down to the bottom of the page or wherever I wanted to put the link. Be sure to see my favorite candy recipes and let's make this word candy a link by clicking on insert link right over here and say desserts and go to candy and there it is now it's duplicated the word candy here i don't need it twice that's my fault only the one inside the purple brackets is visible on the page and I'm gonna add some more space down here and click save and close. And there's a link to the candy page. Now, if, I, if that page didn't exist, let's make up a new section. Let's say it's my vegetables pages. I can navigate using that box or I can use another shortcut. Once you get comfortable with seeing what this markdown looks like, the part in the purple is the part that's visible to the customer and the part over here is the actual link to your page. I could make a new section called vegetables just by clicking it. Okay, closing this and make an attempt to navigate to vegetables. Notice it's red like grandma's spritz because it doesn't exist. Then I have the chance to create the page and I don't want that and I don't want vegetables on my cookie page. There's only certain vegetables that I like at all. No, that's not really true. Okay, I'm gonna make those changes here and close this out. And then let's go on and look at some fancier features that we can put into our page settings. Okay, while we're editing pages, I wanna show you a couple other cool things that you can do with them. First thing I like is you can put those icons from Font Awesome right into the page, and let me show you how to do that. If I wanna take a cookie icon from the Font Awesome library, when you click on the icon itself, you're gonna see the code here for the HTML to produce the icon. And you can include this HTML or any other HTML in the markdown section, and you will see the icon shows up right there on the other side. I think that's cool, and you can use icons on your lists or anywhere that you want to on your page. The other thing that you can do is change some cool page settings. So if you decide you need to adjust the name, description, the path name here again if you change the location of the page you will have to change the links yourself but you certainly can do so right there or the page tags you can do that on this panel scheduling is a way of telling when the page is available for visitors or when it shows an error message so right now this page is published if you turn this off you or your editing team could still work on the page without anybody being able to see it who didn't have writing permission or who wasn't an editor themselves. Even if they had the link, they wouldn't be able to see it. 
This scheduling box down here lets you choose a date and decide that you want to offer this promotion from March 8th to March 12th, which would mean the information on this page would only be visible during that range, any other day that it would give an error message. So if that's useful in your business process, feel free to put that in there or use the published and unpublished status to keep the page from being visible to the public while you're still working on it. The other two boxes of notice in here are the scripts box. This lets you put JavaScript or HTML in here to be inserted at the top of the page as raw code. If that doesn't mean anything to you or you're not the person that does that in your organization, don't worry about that. But if you are, this is a super easy way to inject JavaScript, CSS, any kind of framework that you need at a page level. We'll show you in a different video how to inject those at the full website Mickey level. The final thing you can inject at the page level is CSS styles. Any kind of custom colors, CSS, variables, you name it, all supported right here at the page level. And as with scripts, you can also insert those at the level of your whole Mickey website. And we'll look at that in a different masterclass video. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is how to segregate your links and pages into permissions for different groups and the public. This lets you control who can see your content and who can edit it and who can see the links on the navigation. So let's say that my family's dessert recipes are becoming so insanely popular that we decide to open a bakery and I need to have links for the people who work there to get to our ingredients and vendors, but I don't want that link everywhere on the website. How can I control that? Well, it's gonna take a couple steps, but they're pretty easy. I'm gonna go into administration and down to groups and make a new group and we're gonna call these people staff. And I'm gonna create that group. Then I'm gonna make a new user in the group and by giving them an email address and password and choosing assign to group and click staff. Now I'm not gonna make any staff users today, but you can imagine that if you go ahead and fill this out, you'll have a new user in the staff group. Once you have a group with some users in it, here's how you can control where they can go and what they see on the navigation. If I wanted to add a new page in here, uh, underneath a header that was only visible to my staff, I can make the header visible to my staff. And then I can make a new link and I can call this vendors and it can only be visible to my staff. Now when I apply this, if I'm not logged in as a staff person or an administrator in this case, which I am, uh, I won't see that link at all. In fact, the, with the permissions the way it's set right now, even as an administrator, I don't see that link. So let's go ahead and change that so that administrators, which is what I am, can see that link. We'll go to administration, navigation, and go back to vendors and change the permissions so that administrators and staff can see it. And I'm gonna exit this, and there's my vendors link on the navigation. So this should give you a brief overview of how you can control the navigation. There are deeper level controls on pages themselves about the permissions that each user has for the page. We'll look at users and permissions in a later video. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this Mickey Masterclass. There are examples of everything I've shown you in your Mickey User's Guide, as well as links to other Masterclass videos. Thanks again for your time.